Yo, what's up guys? We're finally taking a look at the classic Ninja Kiwi game, SAS Zombie Assault 3. This game came out back in 2011 and is a top-down zombie shooter. There's a few ways to play this game, but we're working with the Ninja Kiwi archive. I just have to mention how cool the Ninja Kiwi archive is for making these SAS videos possible. It was a very sad day when Flash died, but luckily Ninja Kiwi put in work with this very well made and free archive for their older games. Check it out if you want to, but let's get into the classic that is SAS 3. Can you believe this game came out over a decade ago? Well just looking at it I'm sure some of you can, it's just crazy to think about. This one is definitely a fan favorite, especially as we look at one of the most iconic maps in the whole series, it's just easy to get caught up in nostalgia, but is SAS 3 actually worth playing? Well, there's definitely some good, bad, and ugly we'll have to get into, but let's start with the basics. For those of you who don't know, SAS 3 is back when Ninja Kiwi used to make shooters. This is a wave based game with 7 waves, 5 maps, and it takes about 15 minutes to finish a match. Overall the game is pretty simple and self explanatory just looking at the gameplay. There's a few specific things like those power ups that spawn, but nothing too random or surprising. The difficulty gets harder and harder as you progress through the match. Sometimes you can just camp or hold an area down, but I usually like to walk around or go in a certain pattern. I like to keep in mind that some guns penetrate. Some enemies are easier to kill than others, but nothing's too bad or annoying. I like the enemy variety. There's no difficulty setting, so it's good that it's challenging enough. You still want to win and get XP to level up. That's when we get into the game changing but long leveling system. It's straightforward and pretty satisfying to level up, it just takes forever after a while. I'm only level 20 and it already feels like a grind. I only get about 10 to 30,000 XP per game, and I need this much to level up. But let's say you want a little help with that grind. Well SAS 3 did build on the monetization that SAS 2 had. Just look at all these badass weapons you can get. On top of that you can get some really useful things like health regen, extra damage, more XP for kills, and more money for kills. Well, at least you can get this M1 Grand for free. I was actually tempted to buy all of those upgrades, which wouldn't be too much, like $4, but I'll tell you guys in a bit why I didn't make that purchase, and I actually can't confirm if these still work or not. I assume they do because of the M1 Grand. The monetization in this game is actually very reasonable and it reminds me of a simpler time. Unfortunately you can't buy DLC for another map or new content other than weapons. Luckily the 5 maps you do get are pretty classic and cool. You got the original farmhouse, airbase, a map I'm not even going to try to pronounce, carnival which is very nostalgic, and the last map black isle. These maps have a significant amount of more detail compared to the previous games, but still not anything crazy by today's standards, at least not on this version of the game. And the graphics are definitely one of the last things you need to worry about. There's some bigger issues we need to get into, and remember, we're dealing with the Ninja Kiwi Archive version of this game. There's some little things to criticize like the game not feeling silky smooth, no difficulty mode, the grind, little to decent replayability, not much map variety if you're trying to be efficient, and something that makes most of these problems worse is that you can't even play multiplayer. Yeah, that's right. Everything I've been talking about is for single player only. Technically there's a multiplayer mode, it just loads forever. It doesn't help that there's multiple game modes, but I tried searching for a match for a long ass time. It sucks because I remember those game modes. You can't even play a private match anymore. These were supposed to be the best and most replayable parts of the game. What a damn shame. But what if I told you there was a way to experience some of those features again? Well there's this one way that I know about and it's probably the way most of you are playing this game and that's on mobile. This is something I don't get to say too often about any game ever, but this is a rare time when a game is better on mobile compared to PC. You console peasants aren't even in the conversation, but the mobile version of this game even fixes some of my criticisms. The game runs better, it looks better, there's another game mode called challenge mode, you get a nice little profile and an NPC to help you. I'm still not sure about the multiplayer though. It's just more updated and looks like a modern way of playing SAS 3. Now that's why I don't want to commit to playing this game on PC. I plan on playing this game on mobile and I'm sure I'll make a video about it. So there's definitely some big issues playing on PC with the Ninja Kiwi archive, but at least there's some solutions playing on mobile. I'd prefer to level up an account on Steam. I was even looking at some of the achievements and looking forward to them, but the mobile version of the game might be the way to go. 
but if we have both versions in mind and we're talking about the game itself, then it's still a classic Flash game that can be fun every now and then. It's one of those games where you have to know its history or you just had to be there to appreciate it now. The progression from the earlier SAS games to SAS 3 was pretty big. This was the first biggest impact on the series to make it more modern but in a good way. You have new and expanded on features like more maps with better detail, a cool creepy soundtrack, lots of guns, more enemy types, a better leveling system, a more proper money system outside of the gameplay, more monetization which isn't always the worst, and of course multiplayer that we can't play anymore. So this game brought a lot to the table. It's very understandable why this is a fan favorite. It's the perfect in-between of not being too bare bones like the first two games and not being too modern and monetized like the fourth game. Games were just built different in the Flash era of gaming. It really was the good old days in a lot of ways. You can just casually find free little games and a lot of them were pretty good, but sometimes you'd find a gem of a game like SAS 3. To me, Ninja Kiwi is the king of Flash games with games like SAS, Balloons Tower Defense, the original Balloons, and how they're keeping all of their classic Flash games preserved with the Ninja Kiwi archive. Who's doing it better than that? But enough with all that old school boomer talk. I know what some of you really want to hear, and that's about SAS 5. You want a brand new, fresh SAS experience. Well, I'm here to tell you to keep dreaming, bitch. Okay, I don't mean to put it like that, but until I see a trailer, or official news, or an official announcement from Ninja Kiwi, I wouldn't have any expectations yet. I'd get real comfortable with what we already have, or find something similar. Hopefully we get SAS 5 one day and it makes this part of the video outdated, but when it comes to SAS 3, I think it's a classic and can still be worth checking out. Whether it's still worth playing can depend on which version you play. Playing it on the Ninja Kiwi Archive, unless something changes, it's only fun for a little while until the grind hits you and you realize you only have 5 maps to replay. It's still nostalgic and fun to revisit after a while, it's just not something I'd play long term. That's why I'm excited to try it out on mobile. If you're a fan of SAS, then it just has to be one of the best games on mobile. Now that I think about it, maybe I'll compare the mobile versions of SAS 3 and 4, or just compare them in general. That's just an idea, but if you want me to check out SAS 4 on mobile and SAS 2, then be sure to let me know down below or by supporting and leaving a like. Also let me know what you think of SAS 3 and tell me your favorite SAS game. I'm curious. Either way, I appreciate you guys for making it this far and tolerating me. The support I get on these SAS videos mean a lot and I'm happy to give a breath of fresh air to the community. I mean, there's only like 5 reviews on SAS 3 from over a decade ago. To be fair, there's a good amount of weapon and content reviews. Good job, guys. I also used an image of SAS 3 for my SAS 4 review, but we'll keep that between us. But let's keep these classics alive by making content, playing them, or even just talking about them. Ninja Kiwi was really in their Flash era peak with games like BTD3 and SAS3. It's always fun taking a trip down memory lane. If you want more SAS content, then you could check on the screen. The community goes all out on these videos and it means a lot, so you won't have to wait too long for another SAS or Ninja Kiwi video. Let's just hope one day that it'll be SAS 5. Peace.